give me a second, guys. Oh, gosh. Couldn't breathe for a second, guys. I had to take my inhaler. Sorry about that. Welcome back to Excite All Stars. Today's topic with Coach Bree is going to be longs. Yes, the longs. Longs, you guys. Yes, if you guys just saw me, I was struggling to breathe. I had to take my inhaler because I just ran a model in the house. I'm just kidding. But I have something called asthma. And that um, asthma is something that has to do with my lungs. It's a disease that I have that I'll probably have for the rest of my life. Some people grow out of it. Some people have it temporarily. It can be sport induced. There's plenty of different factors that go into having asthma. But for me, I personally will have it for the rest of my life and it's um, maintained with pills and my inhaler. I actually have to take this inhaler like four times a day just to maintain um, my, it, making sure that my lungs do not stay inflamed and that I'm able to inhale, exhale regularly. So for some of you guys, you might also have asthma or you may have other respiratory diseases. There's a couple of other, there's COVID-19 right now that people, that's also affecting your respiratory, but they're probably not giving you guys inhalers. Giving those people inhalers, they're probably putting them on breathing machines, which is something I have also experienced. Having really bad asthma attacks, or if I get the flu or anything like that, then I probably have to be put on one of those breathing machines, which is just a bigger version of this, and it lasts a whole lot longer. So asthma, basically, it just, your lungs become inflamed by outside factors, right? So because of that, you have different parts of your lungs that get inflamed. So your lungs have different, a bunch of different parts in, that go into you breathing. So of course you have your two lungs and you have your larynx, your pharynx, your larynx. So your pharynx is part of your, um, the part that goes all the way down to your lungs, right? The part of your trachea. Your larynx is actually where your voice box is. So that's how we talk. So your pharynx, and then it goes all the way down to your trachea, which is that rigid part, a um, little bit past your esophagus. So it's, it's, it's right in front of your esophagus. And then you also can breathe in through your nose, um, your mouth. Those are two ways you can get air in. So, we have the left main bronchus, which is a part of the trachea that branches off into the left lung. And then you have your right main bronchus, which is the right part, the right part of the trachea that branches off into the right part of the lung. And then inside of your lungs, you have these bronchi or the bronchus, which are basically just smaller capillaries or like tunnels that are branched out off of the bronchus inside of the lung. So they branch out, they like sprout like flowers and they get smaller and smaller and smaller. And then at the end of the bronchi, there are these, these sacs called alveoli. Those alveoli are responsible for filtrating the air that comes into your lungs. So that is where the filtration process happens. So when you have asthma like myself, all of this is compromised. So it is harder for us to breathe because our avi oh, alveoli aren't working properly, our bronchi are inflamed, our lungs can't really open and close the way they're supposed to inflate and deflate the way they're supposed to. And my trachea is also probably having stuff like pollen or dust that's making it hard for me to breathe as well as my nose and my mouth, right? So, Doctors have a way of people have a way for people to monitor their lung capacity or how much air they're taking. So I have this nice little air uh, check. It's called Air Life Asthma Check. It's a peak flow meter. So what happens is my doctor gave it to me, or you can buy one in a in a store, Walgreens, or places like that, and they're pretty cheap, I believe. Um, but my doctor gave me this one. So my doctor put. Uh, my peak flow meter where it's supposed to be. So if you are in the green zone, that means you are about 80 to 100% of where your normal or usual peak flow should be, which is fine. That means your asthma is under control, right? So then the yellow zone indicates that you need to take a little bit more caution. You need to be a little bit more 
be a little bit more aware of your asthma treatment and how you are working with your asthma. That's about 50 to 80% of where your normal peak, peak flow should be. The red zone means that there needs to be medical treatment that should be happening at that moment. So I blew into it earlier before I took my inhaler and it, it came out to be between 250 and 300. I'm between the red zone and the yellow zone. That is because I have not been taking my medication properly and it was also before I took my inhaler. So I'm gonna reset it and I'm gonna do it one more time for you guys to see if there's a difference. So what you do is you take a deep breath in where you're supposed to stand up. So I'm gonna stand up, take a deep breath in. And so I actually blew it up a little bit higher, more in the yellow zone now. So I blew it at almost a 300, but my doctor wants me to blow at least a 350 every day. So this is something I'm supposed to do every day, but me being me, I do not practice this every day as I should. Do not be like me. If your doctor says you need to check your uh, peak flow every day, check it every single day. Cause this can, this can determine a life or death situation for most people. So today we're also gonna learn about lung capacity. So somebody like me who has asthma, my lung capacity kind of sucks. And then your lung capacity and your peak flow also depend on your sex, your height, your weight, and your age, things like that. So I am a 23 year old female. I'm not gonna tell you guys my weight, but it is somewhere between 100 and 180. And um, 23 female and my height is 5'2", right? So those factors also determine what type of normal peak flow and lung capacity I'm supposed to have. So as you guys can see, I was blowing in the yellow and red. So my lung capacity is not that good at all. But for those of you who want to try it and you guys don't want to have one of these, all you need is a nice little balloon. You're going to need a balloon. You're going to need a ruler. In my case, I have a nice little tape measure right here. And if you want to make it easier, you can use some ribbon or some string if you guys have it, whichever one works for you. So what you're going to do is you're going to stretch out your balloon really, 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 really good. So you just want to stretch it, make sure it's nice and easy to blow into. You might need an adult to help you with this, or if you're an adult, you might need help from a kid who might be able to stretch it better than you can. All right, so now it's all stretched out. It's nice and loose, well, a little bit looser. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take a deep breath in and I'm going to exhale into the balloon, pinch it off, and then I'm going to measure the diameter of the balloon, okay? Ready? One, two, three. <gasps> You guys, <laughs> this is not a whole lot of air at all in my lungs. I'm gonna tie this off, make it easier for myself. Take this very pretty Christmas ribbon I kind of found because we didn't have string. Wrap it around the surface of my balloon. Hopefully it doesn't pop it. right there, put a little, little taut. I'm gonna take my balloon out like this. Oops. And now I am going to take a measurement of my lung capacity with my tape measure. And I am having a hard time with this guys, bear with me. So I'm gonna pull it out some more. Nope. Pull it out a little bit more to meet my finger. So that says that it is about 17 inches, 17 and a half inches. That's the diameter of it with this, with this ribbon. So that's, that's not too good, you guys. I should be blowing at least um, 30 inches of a diameter for this balloon and that that's not there so it's okay <laughs> but i am aware that i have a medical condition that affects my ability to be able to breathe inhale inhale exhale effectively so i'm not surprised by this at all you guys 
So that is our first activity. There are other ways you guys can test your lung capacity. I will fix, uh, put some links down below so you guys can try those as well. And as soon as I, as soon as we come back after the break, we will get into our actual lung activity. Here's what it's gonna look like, you guys. I hope you guys are excited. See you when you come back. Tell me how you're supposed to breathe with no air. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No air, no air, no air. Oh, hey guys, welcome back. I hope you guys had a good break. I just spent some time finished coloring this beautiful lung diagram that my brother started and I'm just trying to finish. So once again, I wanna go over some of the, the anatomy of the lungs. So when you breathe in, you can use your mouth or your nose. So you have your nasal cavity plus par nasal senses, so that's in your nose, and then your nostrils, your oral cavity, your mouth, once your air goes in through your mouth, it goes to the pharynx, down the trachea, and then it branches off into the bronchus. So you have a left and you have a right bronchus because you have a left and a right lung. Then those bronchus branch off into bronchi, and that bronchi ends at a sac called the alveoli. And then you also have something called your diaphragm. So the diaphragm is actually responsible for inflating and deflating your lungs as well. So it's at the bottom of your lungs, just like in this picture. So when you breathe in, it, infl it inflates. So it fills up with air. And then when you exhale, it deflates. So it pushes on your lungs and then it pulls on your lungs, right? So when you have the hic hiccups, that's your diaphragm jumping up and down. So it's making air go out of your lungs really, really fast. Thus, <laughs> hiccups, right? So it's not just because you're growing at night, you guys. It's because your diaphragm is doing hopscotch in your body. So you, um, your ribs are very important. Your rib cage, you can feel them on your left and the right side. They protect not just your heart, but your lungs as well. And then you also have this sac that covers your lungs which is a protective border that also gives your lungs nutrients as well but it's like a, a slimy slick slack sac <laughs> tongue twister that covers your lungs to make sure that they are protected as well so those are just some parts of your lungs there i will also add a link with some more coloring sheets for you and diagrams for you guys to try at home to color and label yourselves so now we're gonna move on to the main event, which is making your own diagram lung. So here I have the body cavity. I have what would possibly be your na nasal cavity and your oral cavity. So two places where your air can go in. Then it will combine and become your trachea. Then it branches off, become your bronchi, your bronchus. And then inside, they go into your lungs, and then you have your bronchi, bronchi and your alveoli. And then I have these two balloons. They um, demonstrate your lungs. And then this part right here is your diaphragm. So I don't know if you guys can see, but I'm going to put it a little closer. So when I pull down, inflate, push up, deflate, pull down, inflate, push up, deflate, right? So this is what you guys are going to be making. So I'm going to walk you through it right now. So some of the things you guys are gonna need are two straws. If you guys have the Play-Doh that we used, um, was it two weeks ago that we made? You can use that or a Starbucks Play-Doh. You're gonna need some assistance from a grown-up because you are going to be using something sharp like a box cutter or a knife or some really sharp scissors to cut through your bottle. Some tape, some scissors, balloons, and a handy dandy water bottle. It can be any shape, it can even be a mini water bottle. You just have to cut off less of the bottom of your bottle. But for right now, I'm gonna use this bottle. So first, I'm gonna start off by popping a hole in my lid. Now I want my hole to be big enough to fit two straws in it, right? So first, I'm going to pop a hole with the screwdriver. You guys have to be very careful with this one. Ooh, this lid is sharp. I mean, hard. So that's not working out for me. So now I'm going to use the knife on my handy dandy multi-tool. 
if you do not have a multi-tool and you are not of age to have thing like this, this is considered a weapon, do not buy one unless you are an adult. So I'm gonna use my handy dandy multi-tool, make a nice big hole like so. So there's my hole. So I should be able to stick both straws in here. So let's test it out and see. Well, let me open it up a little bit more with the screwdriver. Let's see. That's one straw. I don't know if the second one's gonna fit. Nope, so I have to make it a little bit bigger. Let's see, let's open it up just a little bit more. There we go. Okay, so now the hole is big enough. Okay, let's test it to make sure. That's one straw, that's a second straw. So they both fit. So now, I am going to cut the bottom of my bottle. So you don't want to cut it. You can cut it either half, halfway through the bottle, or you can cut it a little bit towards the bottom. So probably by this second ring towards the bottle, right? Bottom. So you can either use your box cutter, or if you have scissors, really sharp scissors, or if you have a multi-tool like me, you can use that as well. I'm going to use my multi-tool because it is a lot sharper than that box cutter. So here we go, I'm gonna be very careful. Try to cut away from you, do not cut towards you. So I'm gonna poke a hole and I'm just gonna cut. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you don't want it to be too uneven because you have to put your balloon at the bottom. There we go. See, mine's not perfect, but it, it will do. Okay, so now that I've got that done, I'm gonna put my knife away. So there are no accidents, if I can get it to, there we go. Put that to the side, okay. So next, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to cut my straws i don't need them to be this long you can leave them this long if you want to but for me i'm not gonna leave them that long i'm probably gonna cut just the top part so you you don't want to cut off the bendy part if you have bendy straws you do not want to cut off the bendy part you want to you keep those so that way you can show the separation from the trachea to the bronchus right so what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna cut the top of the straw just a little bit, probably about right here, one, two. So I think that's long enough. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick them on up. Like so. So that way when I put my top on, they'll be this far down into my bottle, right? Okay. So now I'm gonna take them together Just wrap it around like so. So they're nice and stuck together. There we go. So now I have my two, I have my trachea and I have my, bron my bronchus, bronchuses. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take two balloons. Now, if you have multicolored balloons, you can do a red, you can do two red balloons and one blue balloon to show the difference between your, um, your oxygen rich lung and your oxygen lacking lung so um or your for your diaphragm the blue could be for your diaphragm however you would like to do it but i just have plain white balloons so i'm just going to slide the balloon and slide the straw into the mouth of the balloon and i'm going to take some tape you can also use rubber bands the black nylon rubber bands to tie it on real tight but for my purpose, I'm just gonna take some tape, make sure it is nice and tight, make sure there's no air coming out. To test that, I'm just going to blow into it. Good, so there's no air escaping out of it. And I'm gonna do the same on the other side. So an interesting fact about the lungs, one is actually bigger than the other. Can you guys, can you guys guess why? I'm gonna give you guys like three seconds to shout it out to your parents. Three, two, one. It is your left lung. 
because your left lung is smaller than your right lung because what's on your left side? Boom, 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 boom. That's right, your heart. So your heart is sitting on your left lung. So your left lung needs to have a little bit of less space um, because the heart is taking up space right there in, in your cavity, in your chest cavity. So your left lung is going to be smaller just like how the left side of the heart is actually smaller than the right side because the left side is pumping to the lungs. Just a little fun fact for you guys there. So now I put my two straws, I've taped down both balloons and I'm gonna put my two straws down into my bottle like so. And I am going to screw on my top. Now I am going to take some handy dandy Play-Doh that is still nice and good from a few weeks ago. And I'm just gonna take some and I am going to cover the top like so, just so no air can get out. There we go, you wanna cover this. Or if you guys have clay, you can use clay as well. Or you could probably even use hot glue, but I would be worried that it's gonna melt the straws a little bit. So there you guys go. Now the last part is really important because it's your diaphragm and your lungs need your diaphragm in order to inflate and deflate, right? So I'm gonna take my last balloon and I don't know if you guys can see, but there is like a, a pointy part of the balloon, the top of the balloon. So you guys are gonna want to cut off probably about this much of your balloon. So you don't wanna cut off the whole, you don't wanna cut off half, you wanna make it the top, the top, top, top of your balloon. So about right here, like so. So you don't wanna cut too much off because you're gonna need this to cover your whole bottom. Now this may vary depending on the size of your bottle, but since I have such a wide bottle, I'm not gonna cut too much of my balloon off. So now that I've cut it off, I'm going to tie the end. And if you guys are having a hard time with tying the ends of it, Please ask an adult to assist you. And if you are an old, older person who is having a hard time, please ask somebody else to assist you. So there you go, I've tied it off. And now I am going to put it on the bottom of my bottle. So I'm gonna stretch it out like so. And I'm basically gonna put it on like a hat. And I'm gonna stretch it around. You might need another set of hands for this. There we go. So now it is on. So now all you have to do is pull it down and it should inflate with air when you pull it down and deflate when you push it up. Inflate, deflate, and take, deflate, whew, inflate, deflate. And there you guys go. You have your own set of lungs. So I hope you guys really enjoyed today and I hope you guys continue to be mindful, especially during the time because COVID-19 is a respiratory disease. So this is a good way to demonstrate what a healthy lung looks like versus what the unhealthy lung looks like. And if you guys would like to know what those things look like, all you have to do is search healthy lung versus good lung and, lung and you should see the difference. So that's it for today, you guys. Tune in next week. You're in for a treat and I will see you later. Bye.